Welcome to this month's episode of National Domestic Radio, and this month we are talking about separation anxiety. I think it's something we all deal with, um, with every child. I have yet to meet a child that does not deal with this at one point or another, and um, I feel like it's one of those things that sometimes rears its ugly head multiple times while, um, like, throughout your time with a child. Um, particularly when they're hitting new developmental milestones or things like that, all of a sudden that separation anxiety rears its ugly head. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not just once that's going to happen, it actually happens uh, throughout several stages and it is kind of different for different kids and uh, may not be that, you know, what you expect and you're just screaming because they don't want the caregiver or the mom to leave, but there are, there are different um, variations of separation. Um, and I think you know, even though I have had kids in even like a sleeping consultations, right? Sometimes they talk about, uh, you know, I had one friend that's like, oh, but they don't understand, they're too small, and the child was two years old. Like, you can talk to them, they understand. <laughs> so, but even when they're younger, I would say nine months, like when you're doing the sleeping or trying to separate from the room to the crib, like I still do the, you know, come back, acknowledge you're here, and like, oh, I'm here, I'll be back. But that's where I think earlier, like you do see a lot of that during sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and as early as that, just keep reassuring and telling them like, I'll be back, I'll see you in the morning, uh, or I'll see you at I'm nap. still here, I'm just in the other room. Yeah, this is something that I've always, you know, even putting nap, I'll see you when your nap is done. So reinforce nine months, six months, like it's always, the, the letting them know what's happening, it's very, very important. Yep. And I also find that especially as caregivers, you know, we typically come in in the morning and um, I, I know it's hard for parents, um, especially when they get to be a little bit older, probably like the 12 to 18 months. Um, it's really hard for them to say goodbye in the morning. And I know that's got to be some working parent guilt. Uh, they don't want to be away from their kids. Um, and I, I definitely recognize that. Um, but I think part, part of that is having good strategies to, to handle that situation. Um, because the longer you draw that situation out with the child, frankly, the worse you're making it for everybody involved. Um, the child, yourself, and for the caregiver. Um, I always tell parents, it's like a band-aid. Hug, kiss, quick goodbye, same routine every time. Yeah. Um, and also, don't sneak out on your child. No, That's so no, terrible. No, I no. hate when parents yes. do that. I, I actually went back and I got, when I was teaching, I got a parent back. I was like, you're not sneaking out. <laughs> Come back here. Say uh, goodbye. I, yes, it's very important. Don't trick your child because they will hold on to that for a very long time. Uh, it does not have any benefits. It's not going to make it easier. And I think what a lot of parents understand, like usually your child is going to cry for like, I don't know, 30 seconds after you're gone. Uh, they, believe me, they are not going to be crying for like three hours and I'm pretty sure that... That's a pretty extreme situation. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I, you know, even if it was me, like, I'll let you know if that's the case, I'll call it was like, okay, your child is uncontrollable. Um, but it's not, it's usually it, like the quicker and just make sure like, hi, you know, goodbye, I love you, I'll see you when I get back, yep. I'll miss you, bye, you know, but as I said, quick. Yeah, and, and I think just keeping up with that routine is really important yeah. and reinforcing that I will be back and I love you and I will see you soon is important, but also not dragging it out too much. Yeah. Um, keeping it short and sweet and simple is is the way to go. Um, you know, it, and I also think it's okay to prepare your child because um, even at a year, they understand, like you can say, oh, well, mommy has to go to work soon. It's time to do X, Y, Z, and then mom's going to go to work. Yeah. Um, just to sort of talk them through it. Um, it just sort of helps set the stage. Um, you know, you want to set yourself up for success. Because uh, they know by that time, you know, kids, again, kids are really, they respond really well to routine. And then consistency is actually what's going to make things worse. Uh, so that we were just talking, you know, uh, a few months ago about the episode of, you know, inconsistent work schedules that does make hard to the child because they don't know who's going to be here tomorrow, what day you come, what, you know. But usually, if you have, you can make calendars. We use a lot of this in preschool when they have like a routine and go through the day, how the yep. day looks. Uh, so I also advise parents, like, we can make up a calendar with just pictures of the caregivers, which day mom's going to be home, which day you're going to be with the caregiver. And they can follow even like kids. We have that I in toddler classrooms, actually. Yeah. 
um, that you can just put pictures and walk through the day with them yeah. so they know exactly what's happening. Yeah, I think one of the things we actually did that, we actually had a calendar and we put like a morning, like a wake up uh, with Froggy a couple months ago. The mom actually had an idea, I think she saw somewhere. Uh, we have who's gonna wake her up, who's gonna have breakfast with, uh, who's gonna play in the morning, and then we have who's gonna have lunch with, dinner, and then, uh, or I think there's afternoon dinner and bedtime. So we had like throughout the week, you know, and she, we even have, we did it with magnets, and she even have like her friends for the play date. So she put when she wants to see this friend or that friend. Oh, that's And it's great. amazing because that tells like how the week is gonna look like. She knows when there's school there. Yeah. Uh, who's gonna wake her up? Who's gonna put her to sleep? Um, and she's three, so that has helped us. You know, the weeks before she turned three, and to this day. I think that that gives them a sense of uh, control too, yeah, especially absolutely. when you're getting into the three, which can be tough. Um, giving them that sense of control is huge. Um, you know, I want to see this friend. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're still the adult, and yes. we still have to make decisions most of the time. But um, kind of simulating that sense of control for them um, can be really empowering. Oh, and I, I remember what I want to talk about. So I think also um, sometimes when the child starts, it is normal for kids to actually cry because they don't want mom to leave or they don't want the caregiver to leave. Super normal. But there's also, there are parents that freak that out. Like, oh, but my kid now is just crying. You know, I don't want them to leave them with my caregiver. And it is a developmental state, like uh, stage. Yes. <laughs> like a stone. Was like a, um, so yeah, it, it is appropriate. It does happen. So you don't have to really worry about it. I'll say if really goes on and it's, you will see. Like there, I had uh, a parent that came to me once that it just, you can see the signs. It's not just a separation. If the child yeah. is weary, you know, to a person, then um, how can I put this? I think years ago, and it was really sad, and I felt pretty guilty because it was someone that came after me. So of course, I felt like horrible because I was the one who left and oh. it led to it. But it, it was a lot of things leading to one thing, and it wasn't really about the separation thing, which. I think most parents will see that as the red flag. It's just the, the yeah, and that's not really like it could be far from that part. Yeah, um, but it came it's distinguishing when it's just separation anxiety and when it's becoming something more. Yeah, yeah, uh, and there are other we can talk about this in another show, but there are other behaviors associated with that that you should look out for, but not necessarily just the, the um, you know the separation anxiety because that's normal. That will come and go. Um, I Probably mean, for a long time. For a long time. I don't. <laughs> and I think the key takeaways is really, as we said, just quick consistency. Yep. Um, yeah, and acknowledge, communicate with your child, let them know what's happening. Talk, talk them through it, even when they're little. Yeah. Anybody, it's okay to talk them through what's happening, and um, it's okay if you need to step out and cry because yes. that's okay. Um, the point is you just need to stick with it um, yeah. because it will fluctuate, it will get better and it might get worse later, but um, the, like sticking with it and being consistent is the most important part. Right. And if it makes you feel better, you can ask like, you know, you can text later or let them know. But usually for what I know of all the nannies that I've known and all the kids I've taken care of, like sometimes it's like 10, 30 seconds <laughs> from the moment the door is closed, like, you know, you just need to be good. <sighs> that was hard, wasn't it? Like, what do you want to play today? Which adventures are we going to go? And believe me, the child like, oh yeah, it's aquarium, let's go! <laughs> like, there we go. <laughs> Most kids tend to redirect pretty quickly at yeah. that point. So it, it's, it, it, they're not, don't worry, they're not going to be there crying all day. Um, but they're gonna, definitely going to be happy when you come back. And, you know, they, it's just a, a stepping stone. It's a learning. Um, yes, and, and transitions can be hard for kids from one activity to the next, um, regardless of a person coming in or out. So that I think that just adds another layer. I think that's all we have for the show. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and we will see you next time. And make sure you find us on Facebook. We haven't seen new faces in a while, so make sure you go there, you like our page, and spread the word around. We'll see you next time. Bye. I'm even making like the, you know, facial the, the expressions. facial expressions and <laughs> gestures of like, oh my god, like, and that is, that is perfect, that's count as talking.